the one supporting the other. Um, I'm guessing, I haven't been to a PE teach meet before, I'm guessing that most of us here are kind of physically, educationally orientated and we're interested in that sphere. And <clears throat> we were involved from an early age and we've enjoyed PE. And I'm afraid sometimes that we might be losing some of the elements of PE, losing out to things like literacy and numeracy. And that's why this is about the one supporting the other, LNF supporting the PE curriculum, rather than LNF at the expense of PE. Why do we teach PE? Why the LNF rather? The, well, the key aims of the LNF. The first one is to help teachers of all subjects to identify and provide opportunities for learners to apply literacy and numeracy across the curriculum and is broken down by year group. I think when it came out for schools uh, in the primary sector, it was pretty much a no-brainer really because as teachers we, we have ownership of the whole curriculum in our class, don't we? So we're the providers of PE, we're also the providers of literacy opportunities and numeracy opportunities and we've been able to integrate those in an interdisciplinary manner for years. It's, it comes a second nature. Okay. I guess this clip for me sums up what you know he is. Okay, the clock's ticking. You have until I'm seven years old to make sure I can do this, this, and this. Obviously, I can already do this stuff, because I get lots of help. But loads of kids don't and are really missing out. It's called physical literacy. And we need you to help us as early as possible so we can do all kinds of things when we're older. We'll try anything at this age. So now's the time to help us, before it's too late. Cause if we don't learn these basic skills now, we might just give up. We might never discover what we could have been good at and we might turn into couch potatoes. So fire us up. Inspire us. If you don't, you're asking us to settle for a life that's shorter and less healthy. And we don't want that, do we? No, we don't, do we? There are some fundamental um, principles to pee, aren't there? I think one of those things is getting kids moving and developing their physical skills. In France, they have had uh, for some years now a program called Move More, Bouger Plus. And I think it's in Britain. Is it, is it Move More? I think? Yeah, no. Anyway. Um, so we can't lose sight of what PE is just for the sake of ramming in literacy and numeracy um, programs where, where they're not needed or where they don't fit. And there is a government health warning to that as well. What other subjects should offer stimulating opportunities to apply that learning in the context of those subjects where it is relevant? They should not mean that literacy and numeracy become mantras to be repeated in every lesson in the school day, no matter what the topic. Inspectors certainly do not have literacy and numeracy boxes that must be ticked whenever they observe lessons during inspections. Does anybody know who said that? Anybody? Any idea? Or which organisation it might have come from? That's come from Esti, Chief HMI Dan Keane in her annual report 2012-2013. So even the inspectors aren't sitting there thinking, oh this lesson's rubbish, there's no LNF at all in this. It's, not, it's, it's a fallacy. Okay, I think Mike, no, it's Mike. We were talking before, Mike. 
as a head and as a parent, I'd be pretty annoyed if my pupils or my children were coming back to school from the pool, having worked out how to measure lights at the pool or calculate how much water the pool contains, but have done very little swimming. You know, that's the sort of thing I'm talking about. So the aim for us is to develop literacy, numeracy skills in context without compromising on the delivery of the core physical educational activity. And there are loads of opportunities. I mean, I've picked this one out because, you know, it's, it's the obvious one in a way. Let's look at investigating the effect of exercise on heart rate. You're doing an athletics lesson skills of running, whatever it is, doesn't matter what it is. And during that lesson, you're going to measure the heart rate. But before the lesson, back at base, back in the class, you've done a numeracy science lesson on planning that investigation out, preparing that table, and then when you go back to base, you've got your graph. And it's a lovely graph of increasing heart rate with increasing in, uh, Activity. Okay. The PE lesson itself hasn't been compromised, has it? It's still an excellent athletics lesson where they're active throughout the time apart from when they're measuring the heart rate. But the opportunities that stem from that then, you've got your investigation writing, your report writing. Um, I'm going to hand out some iPads for you and a sheet. I've got one each and I've counted them. Okay. Switch them on and look for an app called Anatomy 4. Have you seen this? Anatomy 4? Yeah, that's it. Anatomy 4. Through the camera, make sure that the heart on the paper is square on your iPad. It's better if you stand up. And you can take that event to all the rest of it. I'm only showing you this, you know, it's taking a bit of time, but because it stems from an athletics lesson, and back in base, back at base, you can introduce this. I mean, you can show a lamp's heart as well, obviously, can't you? You could go further and carry out research why and where is the greatest incidence of cardiovascular disease, what the elements of a healthy lifestyle are. And our PE lesson hasn't been compromised at all, but has been the um, sparked in the motivation for that further investigation of the past. I'm not going to even mention orienteering beyond it's an obvious way of introducing numeracy and literacy into the curriculum, isn't it? Into the B curriculum. You've got your teamwork with communication skills, oracy, and of course the uh, coordinates and um, vectors for math. Problem solving activities. It's again, you know, it's, it's clear that they lend themselves to the development of oracy skills and further work back at base. But again, it doesn't, and, and we're trying to avoid us from kind of compromising the core PE activity. Whoops. And this is a problem solving activity carried out um, in school as part of a, a, a PE program. It's one of many that we do. And we saw the pupils develop an awful lot of their communication skills carrying out activities like this. When they first started, it was a shambles. They all went off on their own and tried to fight their way through. You can hear now, can we? I'll be quiet now. An awful lot more discussion. In our PE lessons as well, we use the iPads for uh, recording the skills that they're developing. They give each other feedback on how they're carrying those skills out um, 
and assess each other on their performance. This is very clear what Callum's given in his feel about, about how he felt that night. offers a lot for the development of literacy and numeracy skills. However, we don't want to lose out on the curriculum itself. This is another program we're running that has sport and physical education as a focus to it, you know, the core focus to it. It was developed by one of our teachers when she worked for the um, British Olympic Association and it involved some high-flying athletes all of whom had been through some tough times and had to overcome a challenge in their lives difficult upbringing, whatever it was and they recognised that these six factors were their keys to success mental toughness, hunger to achieve people skills, sports life knowledge, breaking barriers and planning for success. We bring that into the classroom. It's sport that's the focus for this. And they discuss each of these during each half term. They've discussed things like drugs in sport. And because it's sport, they're fascinated to hear Kelly Holmes's uh, story of overcoming difficulties, um, how athletes have overcome issues like, um, well, it's Kerry Holmes, there's, um, who's the head athlete? Jessica. Jessica Ennis. She had to learn to run again, didn't she? She had to learn to take off on a different foot for her long jump, for her high jump, for her hurdles, and that, for a developed athlete, is an incredible achievement. That's got to take mental toughness, hasn't it? So they learn about the difficulties others have and, uh, and undergone, and they then apply it to themselves. And the keys to success build up into little targets and stories for them. I spread some of these around. I need these back, by the way. A few of them. seeing is that the pupils are motivated to produce work, develop their literacy skills because these stories are relevant to them, because they're sports based. They talk about Lance Armstrong, you know, was he a hero? Was he a cheat? I know where I stand, but it's up to them to develop those opinions themselves, isn't it? But that's another example of PE feeding into the LNF, not the LNF guiding us by the nose. There are many opportunities, I think, to develop literacy and numeracy through PE without, again, you know, compromising what you want to achieve in PE. Um, they've measured out Bob Beeman's long jump, uh, triple jumps. Anybody ever seen? Do you know what the triple jump record is at the moment? You know, triple jump. Triple jump. 1890. 18 meters. 18 meters. You see it on the floor. Same. The same bolt runs 100 meters in. A year six child, if they're excellent, in 13 seconds. They've got to be outstanding to that, aren't they? Where would they, where would they be in the 100 meters race when the same bolt finishes? There's all sorts of those sorts of things that can come into the PE. Can we also start the mornings with a golf card. Who plays golf? 
Number three players got 18 holes of golf, add up the scores. You also bring in the handicaps and take it much further with the more able and talented. But they're not sitting in PE lessons on their bottoms, filling in forms or writing a plan for how they're going to do a skill. That's done in the lessons. PE is PE lessons are for PE. That's our opinion. So at a school crag on, we're using the one to support the other, not the one at the cost of the other. Yeah, no.